This is Colin. I'm here with Mirko from Unix. And today we have another amazing AMA session planned. The Unix NFTs. We've been waiting very patiently for one week. The exciting news. What, what can you tell us? What have you planned out? What is uh, the purpose? Um, yeah, it's a um, 10,000 NFT collection. I mean, that's like pretty common, you know, like the, the numbers. Um, it's uh, definitely, of course, it's not a C CCO collection or something like that, nothing fancy, you know, but it's completely driven by the community. Um, I think it's just fits super in the ecosystem, you know, because um, to have, let's say, a token as a payment, for example, is harder, for, I think, to, to integrate on, on several platforms uh, you know, uh, instead of an NFT. You know, so um, because I, I see an NFT, first of all, like a little bit like a, like a master card, you know, what is like have perks or like like a membership card, you know, and you have more and more discounts among these, uh, let's say, restaurants or shops and so on. You know what I mean? Like so and um, especially in crypto and, and, and various like it don't need to be definitely only gaming. It can be for for a lot of different um, things in the future as well, you know? So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's basically it's called Noobs, you know? It's like, uh, because we're a gaming guild there, so. Yeah, that's and, a good name. And I checked it, it's also unique. It's not really used, uh, you know, there's so many names used and uh, Noobs is definitely the name. The I have no uh, concept art yet. Um, but if, uh, definitely all the characters are related to gaming. You know, let's say, uh, you, you know, Gordon Freeman from Half-Life. He is famous for this orange suit. And in front, you have this uh, Half-Life logo. So, you know, one noob wearing that suit. One noob wearing the red shirt and have the yellow hair from Duke Nukem, you know, with the sunglasses. You know, everything goes into the gaming direction. Because I believe that there's also a lot, a lot of people um, who can identify themselves with these retro games or with World of Warcraft, you know, or with, with other several characters because you, you spend time on that. You know, I think this is a, it's a unique collection character uh, on that side. And um, I think it's going to be pretty cool, you know, you, you, because like, imagine you, you've been a hardcore half-life gamer and you want gordon freeman you know it's like that's that's my my nft my noob so it's like i think to to get this kind of factor so that you like a kind of you know a, a rare pokemon i understand yeah. that that there's rarities on, on nfts that are sometimes super random you know you have like like the the golden board ape for example yeah i mean this is but this is, this is just golden. There's nothing really related to what you can identify personally with, you know. And um, I love Gordon Freeman. If I would see him and I could get him, you know, on a on a on a, a secondary market, then maybe I would I would chase him. You know what I mean? So I think that's uh, from the from the um, concept, you know, how to of course find an audience, but also. Um, uh, I, I think this is also important to, to separate a little bit because, you know, not necessarily all the collectors are, or, or there's many, many more people who drive the NFT space, but a lot of people are just there for the money and, and you know, giving, giving them a little, a little bit more reason maybe to buy your utility for, you know, game inspiration and so on with it with a good thought process behind, I think this is also important. Um, otherwise you end up maybe to be one project among a lot of projects, right? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think um, what is already unique on the um, NFT is basically that you have instant um, utility, you know, because this is some, okay, once this goes out, the, the, the launch pad is live, there's the app coming and um, there's more, what will be unlocked, of course, a roadmap, but it's already like actively working. So there's not a fundraising, like a startup on this NFTs. I think this is very important. And that's why we go a little bit higher pricing on that. But also long-term we have uh, more to 
to offer also, you know, like um, I think we're looking at one Ethereum, 1.5 Ethereum, what we want to raise on each uh, NFT. Um, so it's about, uh, in the current market, it's about $32 million. Yeah, this is something what we, I mean, think about, you know, it's like really, I mean, we have, um, and this is not only that we have the NFT collection, um, also, you know, an NFT project need also a little bit credibility in the NFT space. I'm not famous in the blue chip or you or, you know, like, and, and we have um, the person who will support us there is um, Alan Hina. So he is the, the chief strategy officer on Gary V NFT. So he will be basically um, find the community manager. Um, he help with illustration, with setup, with strategy to get to the market. Um, and he will be, of course, he will be part of, you know, the team what is on the deck. And um, so this is something important, I think, to drive us a project, you know, to give a little bit like a kind of a, uh, yeah, a leadership person in the space to, to have him basically as a face advisor. Um, also, there will be a collaboration with his current NFT project, what is, um, um, what I don't name yet because it's nothing uh, official once we live and we, we announce Right, that. yeah, of course. Do that. Um, yeah, so this, I think this is already a, a very important and I think that's why we can step up with the price and not only because of that, because also because we be heavily uh, working for this NFT collection. So. Um, again, back to the to the point. This is ten thousand piece. Of course, rarities. We have different perks. Perks again um, to to uh, summarize is the allocation from Launchpad, where you basically have uh, with the we use the VRM from Chainlink on that. So it's basically you you participate in the public when we have public races. It's not always uh, public and uh, common uncommon you know it depends on really on the tiers and you know like um and this is something we don't know yet. It's, we, we can unlock after we see how popular the, the launch is if there's maybe the option to that maybe several rarities or with, with a with a different floor price that we also unlock more uh higher tiers you know what i mean like so um, let's say you have a very unique one and this have this in this floor and then you also maybe have rare or epic you know but very limited because we don't want to uh, interfere with the launchpad community because it's definitely two different communities right right um, and so we work also with ENS we do something about a, a gamer ENS for um, for noobs um, and setting up kind of a a dashboard but this isn't longer down the road so it's basically your activities are um yeah tracked through your ens if you want to set it up or not um there's a partnership with meta uh, meta tech meta tech is basically it's also for gamers but can be used for a lot of various uh stuff so um it gives you the option same as it works as the as a ens some kind of it's kind of not the wallet address it's like your your uh, digital domain and you can basically donate on the domain it, it will goes to your um to your wallet you know so like like twitch have this uh donation right so right. it's pretty common and um and why a donation is because, you know, there's many, many creators, you know, and um, there's so many people, especially in, in, in the, um, um, yeah, uh, uh, NFT space, people building discords, they, they, you know, doing art, they're doing, you know, they're doing so much free stuff to build community and basically to have, um, yeah, a, a possibility to, to reward them, highlight their, the tag, you know, that, that people can donate basically on the tag. This is something as a partnership is basically you have to mint it. So it's, it's there's the uh, mint price, you know, is, um, and this with, uh, with our NFT, basically you can mint it for free. You know, so it's something 
you can have as a as a perk. I'm not right away. This will be you know like strategic and yeah, stretched on my <laughs> like on the road. Um, and then we had actually a plan um, before, and we shifted a little bit. So um, because the other side being uh, we understand and uh, now how they would, the, the, the let's say the level works and you know that they have the SDK for everything. Um, and we basically, what we anyway do already is developing Sandbox, Decentraland, Exit on their SDK, you know. So we will basically now, and not only with because of the NFT collection, but also with Unix Gaming, we will really, really uh, shift to other side. And really, we want to uh, develop a lot on, you know, character design, uh, item design, resources, level, mini games, rich games, and so on. So there's a lot of things we want to develop anyway with our game studio. So basically with the NFT collection, you get, per, if you have uh, your one, hold one NFT, you can went, claim one time a 3D character for the other side. Yeah, a noob character. That's a, it's basically a, a perk. It's a free mint. We will develop basically for each, the, for all the um, collection that with our game studio and the SDK of other side. And of course, um, we use parts of the fund now really to, um, uh, depends on, you know, you need to have kind of, yeah, uh, other, uh, other side is for the Biach Club. And, um, and, and putting really more funds into the other side and the land and um, because, what I see or what a shift came and why we, we changed strategy and the good thing is we, because we are not live, right? So we have to, and we didn't really announce except this AMA today to go really public with what we want to do there. But- Alpha information once again. <laughs> but it's, you know, like like Bitcoin is very strong because it's the dominance of the market. And I believe, or we see internally with our partners that um, Yuga with, with all the, um, collections they have and what they build they're the kind of the bitcoin of the nft space so yeah they will move the market you know so like they setting standards and trends and they basically of course there's a lot of innovation i'm not saying they're uh be the dominance but it's kind of we building on bitcoin you know if we, uh, ex we if we build on other side you know if we focusing on other side so it's um x infinity i think is not so strong and even it's like they they take that as an example of this in game file but i think other side is so strong in nft and then also it will swap into a game right once it's live and then and there's a token right. it's also relate to gaming now really before border yacht club wasn't so now it's really fit in our ecosystem so it's a perfect match actually with what we are already established for example with the ecosystem builder uh, partnership on on sandbox and, and XC, for example and now putting that plugging that in as a utility and really like because all the items it's same in sandbox just sandbox um maybe you uh, remember there was like all these collections they gave you uh, a, a free or even cyber kongs they sold their voxel uh character you know that you have the kongs baby kongs and then you have to box and this is the character for the sandbox you know so if you have that you can play basically a cyber Kong in sandbox and now believe me everybody will do that for for other side the sandbox nobody from the nft space i think sandbox is not interested anymore you know so everybody will go there and this is like a huge shift so and um i think it's a, it's really good and um having the 3d character you can then join the game it's basically your ticket to enter you, and then we can build items. Uh, and this is something, I mean, I can say that here. Um, what I'm thinking, because you can you can do resources and also uh, as a create resources. So, and I was thinking uh, just replicate. I don't, I need to understand the SDK. And I will definitely, again, if we have funds, we I will push funds in development that we develop. But let's say a fishing hook with several, several, uh, uh, you know, like like World of Warcraft, different several types of fish. Um, then you know, like this is just an example, but you know, uh, 
slowly, slowly build this resource system, what you have in, in, in um, World of Warcraft, the auction house, you know, like building that like with a, with a full a rollout of like maybe thousand fishing uh, tackles. And then with this, you have different resources among the game or different games where you can basically get the resources and then we create an economy because you at the end will earn as a creator on all these resources, all the items. And this is just one thing weapons tools games houses whatever so there's so so many things tower defenses whatever you want it's like really it's, it, it, there's so much creativity um of course we get we would have a lot of limitations if we if the if the sdk is like um like on sandbox for example because sandbox actually if you build there you can build an open world where people can walk that's one thing but if you want to build a game it's not yet even multiplayer possible. Can you imagine? I didn't know that. I like once before. So once we got our partnership and we, we got finally the tools and we, you know, they said, oh man, you cannot, you can only play alone. <laughs> what is that? You know, because they, they have, I mean, they want to en enhance that. But so of course we, we see maybe um, uh, facing challenges if the SDK is not really good advanced. I hope it is. Because would, would they not like expand it along the way perhaps can be um but it should be right in the beginning if you open up the sdk and let's say say oh guys now you build the metaverse you know and you you can only build that Fair little enough. because the, you have yeah. not enough tools then your metaverse looks uh tetris or lemmings you know <laughs> but if you want to at least get uh, to the level of commander keen or whatever, yeah, or other games, then then you need to have like more and more tools. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's a question about the other side with the graphics. Um, not really sure how it looks, but um, it, it's like um, the the mini games can be very different. So it's basically. Um, Imagine, so the land is basically a, a portal, let's say, and then which, which repre, represent the game experience you can enter. And then you can, you enter basically a game outside of the, uh, of the so every game have, can have different graphics a little bit, you know, like you have limitations. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the land plot is really still unclear, for example, on Yuga, uh, on on uh, the other deeds, what is really all these utilities? Because there's like there's so many ways. Like there's like a five layer, right? Um, there is the sentiment, you know. There is um, the location is important of the rarity sentiment. Um, the 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 tier you have stars from one to five. Then what type of it? There's like east, west, north, south, and then. It's really complex that you understand really what what they actually have planned to build from their side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so it's super exciting, and I think we will catch a lot of audiences there. Oh yeah, definitely. It's definitely the number one thing. I I seen an update today on Illuvium Lens Hill. That's going to be massive as well. Did, did you see the article? I think it's it's also uh, two hundred thousand land plants, something like this. Where it, it's a huge collection, Illuvium. Ah, Illuvium, yeah. But there's five tiers, and like it's it's one to five Ethereum, five to ten, ten to fifty, and then the fifth tier is eighty Ethereum. Um, so again, it's also well, probably a six hundred, eight hundred million dollar uh, deal, right? So uh, yeah, they're definitely it, it, trying to push. Me, uh, their... I'm, I'm a little bit curious with this with all these land drops, you know, because. I see it like in Illuvium, they should have already raised enough money, in my opinion. You know, like they have already token raised, they sold already NFTs, and now they're having another land drop. I even didn't know that. Yeah? And the game, I mean, some footage they had better gameplay. What is it was okay. Yeah. I thought it looked but, good. Yeah, but it's like you need another 200 million or whatever what they want to raise to to or 50 to, to buy and you know like this is like just concerns you know if these land really have utility um uh, then I, I have no problem with that um i think blocktopia they dropped also land 
um, or they're going to drop land. Um, and then you need to hold, to buy it, you need to buy a block token. So um, yeah, it is like, I, I, I feel in Blocktober case, personally, I feel this is a, to, to support the token and to make more money. This is my, and I, even I like the project, but they had like really problems with the tokenomics, um, with, with token release and whatever, they had some, uh, some mess up. I don't know if it's big or small, but of course there've been a lot of people not happy about that. And then, you know, oh yeah, now we make a land drop and we use our token. So this is, I don't know if this is then fixed. Love the treasury and fix yeah. it basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, so um, yeah, that's basically it. Of course, the, the eSport team we still um, do, but, um, you know, not, not extensive. It's, it's something you need to grow over time from the funds, you know. Um, so, and then of course the noobs, we have also um, an event most probably it's we still looking for all the partners it's going to be most probably october in dubai coca-cola arena uh it's going to be entrepreneur uh diverse unix sandbox we hope uh, digits digits we, <laughs> we we hope that you know our, our guys from uh, andy and simon they are today they arrived in singapore to meet uh, don Quan you know uh, oh yeah yeah he told me Luna. Yeah, yeah. exciting very exciting yeah um and yeah so we tried to get him on um and cz you know but sandbox is definitely coming and of course other games and gaming partner it's it's kind of an, we, we have galaxy racer what's a huge oh. esport tournament provider they they recently hosted the biggest dota 2 tournament ever with the biggest prize pool in dubai so and um, yeah, having kind of a blockchain gaming GameFi event uh, with after parties, of course, and then also an esports tournament live in during that period. So oh, that would be dope. Yeah. So and then yeah, of course you get kind of I don't know if you can get ten thousand tickets for that, but at least uh, um, we need to see how how is the the size and how many tickets we have in total. We we need to talk with them with the marketing team there and with the you know event host i mean who will basically coordinate all that stuff but for sure there is either discount or at least thousand tickets confirmed we can give away uh for that event through the noobs collection um so there's something again like and and you know for esport events gaming events and you know there's more and more i mean projects within the unix um ecosystem you know like what is what is the noobs but you cannot map that out because you you know you need to look at a market which projects you have uh, which one giving a seeing <laughs> see on october um and um so there's like yeah so many ways to incentivize communities right um but we need of course on the unix side get our own spirit live get really the market that, you know, this is attractive that games and projects want to launch. And then you have an, an, an always a, a continue, never ending, I would say, uh, utility basically, because you always can make up something with your projects you have anyway on the other side, uh, not the other side, I mean like Unix gaming and then yeah. the, the loops. So yeah, and then of course the, the uh, collection is, uh, will be something like um, not like board apps that you yeah kind of you, so there's the serums right to to upgrade to, to yeah. mint a mutant and basically you can you will earn skill but this is not a token with no liquidity it's just basically as a as a counter so you can earn skill you can trade skill uh, but this is we, we don't know how uh, which marketplace this would be uh, or how we do how we um, we will most probably build it in, in our website but the thing is um, skill is basically to upgrade later on for serum or let's say um, let's say uh, I don't know uh, how to call it uh, yeah and, and uh, yeah skill is makes you better so it's basically kind of uh, the blue or the red pill from from uh, matrix then, you, then your noob becomes a uh, pro uh... Oh, becomes elite you know this this elite is this kind of back in the days as well 
And then having an, another drop by this is like, again, when everything builds on each other, this was, was one successful, you build some out, you have more community, people love it or not. We need to really see, I think it's, it's super important in that space to listen to the community and read their mood, you know? And of course, release on time. Um, I think at the moment, it's actually a good market. Even there's like a lot of, um, there's a lot of eyes on the on the NFT space, and I also for the for the uh, for the success of the NFT drop, I think being so heavy tying your roadmap into Yuga, you know that's also oh yeah you know like people is they, you know they, they because the problem is I think for a lot of uh, the psychology is like board ape is too expensive, mutant is too expensive as a as a retail right who who missed the train. And um, so what can I, okay, but what, what, what I can do with that, you don't want to have this dog, you know, it's like, you know, even- It's I, something, but it's not really what you want. Yeah, so there is, of course, you can get a me bit. It could be maybe cheap, but it's like still expensive. And having a new collection, not of course sponsored by Bore Biachtla, but building on that and getting, giving you the, the, the 3D model, and you will see more coming with that with that concept, like with, with a free 3D model for, uh, or maybe paid, who knows? Yeah? And yeah, I think this is like onboarding more people in their metaverse. This will, you guys, and we hope we, we can get in contact with them to, you know, on the, on the builder program, you know, to share what we want to do. We have already working on level concepts on our game studio. Um, but of course we need to understand the, the SDK completely, but definitely we want to be not to be unprepared for for possible you know exchange of um, informations with Yuga or you know the team who is in charge for the SDK. It's not not the big guys, right? It's gonna be uh, part of the organization, and then you know having at least like oh this is what we already did on Sandbox, this is what we did on Decentraland, this is from Axi, um, what we in general did on in the traditional gaming. Plus then, okay, now we are here and we want to push it hard on the other side in the metaverse. So, Don't you so in this is, case push less on the other metaverses? Um, with the game studio? Yeah. Now that's why I'm saying like, um, I, I will, uh, with, the, with the funding, we will hire more people really to, to build, to, to, of course we don't let things go so we, we just ramp up our game studio and we have a lot of contacts already since we we live you know with, with it's the, the noobs funding that you're referring to exactly, exactly. Oh, okay yeah and um and you know it's like and, and sdk is not so developer heavy so you need a, a few smart people give them percentage on whatever give them a noob give might make them committed um and you have a never ending and an evergreen uh let's say dedicated development team you know and give them a salary basically and then you know they, they or maybe even from the secondary so from royalties you can incentivize them you know you say the developer team they get percentage so this one is wasn't made yet the, uh, how the royalty royalties will be split um but yeah, we want to, of course, incentivize the community, right? And and grow and grow and uh, having that as a um, yeah as a mechanism to to grow, basically. Yeah. Makes sense. Interesting. In terms of you know the the utility of the noobs for the ecosystem of Unix, right? You refer to to the launchpad. Uh, what, what about all the other parts of the ecosystem? Because I assume with the price, let's say beyond one Ethereum, right? Whatever the price or around one Ethereum, whatever the price might be, you're looking definitely not at your guild, right? Because I assume uh, anything for the scholars, they, they won't be able to, to participate, I assume, uh, for these NFTs. Uh, what kind of audience are you looking to attract uh, towards Unix with these NFTs? It's... Um, we build a separate community there. I mean, it's really, we don't want to match them with, with Unix gaming because it's going to be very different. It, ah, okay, so it will not carry the Unix branding? No. It, it's ah, new. Okay. It's the team is, of course, it, there's myself, the, the CTO, there's Alan, 
um, the illustrator, and then the partners we have, like Unix Gaming is a partner, Final Round is a partner, um, uh, MetaTag and the project from Ellen and you know others, what we will line up now, who is interested to join, uh, maybe we can get other partnerships already in more game developer side. I mean, I have our, our game studio is there. Maybe we find also a larger one um, what is maybe interested in that. And maybe already more partnerships, what can in the gaming space, what we uh, do outreach at the moment to gaming brands, you know, like Razer. Uh, let's say you have the NFT, you get a discount on, on Razer or you get like whatever, or we can make a, you know, having um yeah these kind of these partnerships already maybe something lined up and having razor on the deck why not or any other yeah, yeah. Say, no, that would be player cool. msi nvidia um all that stuff so that would be very interesting to to have them now and um yeah and then there's i think the the this the gives more underline more the seriousness of the project and this, I think, is important, you know, um, because you, you're you not convincing just by having an awesome roadmap, right? Um, it's really sometimes, and this, I don't like that in this space, it's who you know, you know, or your network is your net worth, something like that. Very and, classic. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, I think that that's a, a good start for, for the collection. Um, we definitely, I'm not really experiment and you know like unix was basically um i wouldn't say an experiment but it was a very unique concept a guild right so and we even identified the unix as a guild only is not enough yeah so we, we put the, the first white paper there was already a launch but the marketplace the game yeah because we have the the possibility to do it and um to have a, a plan b basically you know and um so but in nfts you more likely know what, where you have to what buttons you have to press and it's just about the structure and how much effort you put in the beginning let's say community building is i think one of the most how you promote how who is the community leader how many mods which mods where you get them from are the experts is this random you know it's like so there's a lot of things to do just to organize the the the, the project around that um is um and then of course who's leading that who's your advisor which your partnerships all that stuff so there's a lot of things you to aspects you know to tick off to basically uh go out there yeah so and then there is a question uh <laughs> if this is an appropriate question in your opinion nfa is it is a 3.3 floor other deed good idea i like it when they always say not financial advice but please give me financial advice <laughs> little disclaimer uh, yeah it's an interesting question yeah um what do you think no i mean this is like this is already i i really observed the market for for yeah the after launch for three four days really for hours to purchase because we didn't have a coder so we purchased three coders um one with weapon and it's really and i i checked always the, the base floor and then um i think you you should look this is like one star floor definitely you need to look as a, as a on a on a five star floor and if possible, the location is closer to the center. You know, what so are these codas like, used for? There's not really yet the uh, total uh, release or what is the, uh, but it's definitely um, you have certain coders, what gives you certain abilities on different lands, you know, like you have, they can match with the land basically, with the sentiment or with the environment. So they are, they are stronger on that one um i think it's basically it's i think it's a builder of the world you know kind of um and you you can fight monsters you can gather resources every coder will be i think part of something it's like a peon i believe 
you know, and then there's different, um, uh, the mega coders also not really understand what all that happened, what is that? Because if you're a player, it makes sense if they would be like NPCs, right, that you could engage with, uh, and then you earn more if you have a code on your land, because people can do like specific quests or stuff on your land, and this code is basically the trader or, or anything like that. Yeah. At Cora, we're having a significant role. This is what we know. We uh, that's why we got three uh, people saying in the uh, body chat that they're going at least to a hundred ETH floor. How um, much was the, the those coders? How how much? Yeah. Um, Too much. <laughs> floor is around twenty two ETH. Last time I checked. Mm, okay. And um, but it's also also there's you know land that have artifacts. And artifacts is also have kind of in, in all these resources have uh, uh, tiers and rarities and the artifacts have rarity. So it's really like, so what we purchased, what we looked for, I mean, the market was still uh, lava, yeah? We looked for a high star land with a coder and with an artifact. Yeah, because people under priced that. So uh, uh, let's say a five star land was like five East by that time. An artifact with whatever land, with let's say with the one star land, an artifact was at least three, three for Ethereum, a land with uh, with with um, uh, with an artifact, plus the coder. The coder was by that time was floor around twenty five, so plus artifact four plus five star land or four star land that was another four or five Ethereum. So you've been somewhere with uh, thirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, you. <laughs> uh, I tried to mute before, but I couldn't. Oh, good. Um, yeah, so the, the actual uh, price was between 42 and, uh, sorry, 32 and uh, 36 Ethereum for all these three things. And we managed to buy one for 24 uh, with all these criteria, 126. And the last one, 27.8. Yeah. Pretty good. And if you buy these things separate, and, and it was still like, I, I, I checked really for three days the, the market. And in the beginning, there was more nice catches, you know, really sniping exactly that, that uh, these three things. And then it became more slow, more slow. You see for hours, just the same, the same uh, um, setup. You know, nothing changed. Um, yeah, so I think with every release, what they do, and you saw everything what they did was massive and it had always price impact. You know, of course it was normal that, you know, the board apps going down after the, um, uh, all, the all the things, because the, the mutants been 40 East before the release. And then it went, they went down to 26. It was, it's just normal, you know? Yeah, of um, course. That makes sense. Uh, and we, uh, I mean, we, yeah, we definitely want to also with our YouTube channel. We, we, I, I, when I'm back in, in Bali, I'm gonna be really money. It's like kind of my part of my day to talk about that because you will have the, I don't see many YouTube channels continuously talking about all the developments. Now you have a lot of developments before you can only talk, oh, bought it, the, the NFT, but now you have a lot of things to about, uh, talk about in other side. And then giving him basically the insight from the development plus what's coming to so be the news channel on YouTube also for the other side. I think this is a, some some niche because it's, if you check the, the search inquiries is huge. And uh, whatever they do, other deeds, coders, everybody try to find something, you get information about it. But just one video or maybe, you know, not, not, too, not, in, not dedicated, you know, and this is also something we, we push in. I think it's a, it's a good strategy, and um, I, I know you also uh, dropping an NFT around end of June, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I did by that time. I'm not going to do the end of June, but um, definitely the community community is already open, um, and we because in the N, uh, NFT NYC. I will. I want to go there anyway, and then Alan is there, and um, and we also we want to really like, you know, there's a lot of NFT heavy NFT people from the blue chip space, so you know, pitching them like not pitching but like 
making the connection, inviting them to your project, you know, like that. Um, I think dropping some whitelists and so on. Uh, I think it's it's a good place to to have a, a yeah one on one marketing, you know. Yeah, it's always uh, it's always a good move. I think in general to to connect with these individuals is difficult. So if you could catch them in person, I think that's the best thing. I, I wanted to pick up one question which Teddy has asked before, which is good because that's one of my favorite topics. And let me see if you agree with my uh, explanation. So he asked, "Do you think it has no benefit to use a project token to buy the project land or and or NFTs? What are the pros and cons?" So I think that's a very interesting question because there should be a clear distinction why that is done. The whole reason why it is done is the most important thing. So to fix a problem with the tokenomics, sure, right? To stimulate your own uh, token uh, market behavior, sure. Um, But to basically fix a problem with the demand side, that is the problem, right? Because the token should have a utility that fixes the demand. If there's too much supply and the price goes down, you do a race in your token and your land because you're desperate. That's what I would refer to as Ponzi-nomics, right? There's no economy behind it. So the price crashes. You're trying to artificially manipulate the price by doing a land race. And that's what Merco, I think, referred to earlier. If the land has no clear utility on what it's for, then you can basically say it's Ponzi-nomics. They just try to fix a problem with the price. To, to keep their reputation, to keep the price high. But the price, whether it's floor price or token price, in my opinion, is always a direct resemblance of the value that the audience perceived on your project. Whether it's a project or a business or any business in general, that's that's how it would work. Um, yeah, I totally agree that um, you cannot fix a problem with, you know, for example, use your token uh, uh, to get maybe the token back uh, or to buy the land and make maybe with the land money or whatever this is. Um, but it, it's temporary because all the tokens go to the treasury and now you control the supply. But as the company, you sold those tokens to get utility out of the tokens. And with, yeah. with you controlling the supply, that is useless. It's, I had a discussion this morning on, on, in our Discord server about rebase, right? So a project went from rebase to no rebase yet they give a guarantee that they that they buy back the token at a certain price so at some point the company holds 99 percent of the tokens and, and the project is done right because they can't keep buying back the tokens and not putting them back into the supply because that's basically oh my god i have a beautiful river you can swim in it but every time you want to swim i take a fee which is one bucket of water at the at, at, in two years time there's no more river because you scooped out all the water and then if you don't put in back water then the river dries up mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, on the side, let's say you, if you're a new project, I think then it's, or you have, a, a, let's say, a few exchanges, or I think it's, uh, that is the, the like, like, just put a duct tape, you know, on a, on a, yeah. on a leaking hole in the ship, you know, it's like, it, it will get, uh, not solve the problem, you know, um, and it's, I think you need to, we need to identify the project first because, for example, best example for example, Yuga, yeah, um, the the ape coin, you know, because that's what they did, right? They they take the ape coin to purchase the land, you know. But um, in, in that case, for example, they had a huge airdrop, right, in the in the very beginning. Yeah, so they push so, the supply themselves, basically. Yeah, so they take supply back because what they dropped, you know. And um, I mean, they had one of the most fantastic uh, exchange listing days ever I saw. Really, like everybody was there. So, and there is such a huge volume anyway trading on the token. Right. You know, so uh, if they charge now, um, you know, let's say they, let's say they have one million volume, and they charge on their on all their land the ape coin, then it makes no sense, you know. But they had like. I think what was the 4.5 billion trading volume uh, on release of ApeCoin in 24 hours, even more uh, when it goes to uh, uh, when we had the other land, uh, the other side uh, uh, land drop. So then it's okay if you if you make an airdrop or if you want to, um, <laughs> no duct tape, yeah. Um, 
No, if you make an airdrop, I think in that case, really makes sense to take, to do that. But they, if you if you know the roadmap, like they are basically building their own marketplace, so everything with this like the land, the coders, the resources, everything will be traded in their own marketplace. You know, so and, and the ApeCoin is the, the payment method there. You know. Yeah, and no, I would say it's fair that like like you said, if the volume is there and the liquidity of the company is there, then it makes sense because yeah. I would assume that you guys not going to hold on to these ape coins forever. Some way in the future, they will bring them back into supply. They will liquidate it against US dollar or something, but it will go back into the market because when the economy is big enough, the ape will otherwise reach reach a point where the economy or in game or whatever it will stagnate the process so then they can influx it again but if they control the economy i love it when games or projects control their economy but manipulation because like you said putting some duct tape there the problem will come back because for example on which project did we just talk about? Well, let's say you 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 buy back forty percent of your token, right? You have forty percent uh, of your token in treasury. Price goes up, right? Because there is uh, less supply, same demand, and then because you can't hold that momentum, everybody's seeing that. Oh well, they did a good thing. They burned the tokens or whatever. Well, this is a buyback, not even a burn. So it goes up, and then over time it it goes down again because people were hyped about the fact that oh my god like there's there's less and no, then and it goes down that, if the problem goes back coming if this and this is something and i know that you know people waiting in our community is burning and say ah, we need something i said okay what i can do i cannot push the launch pad i cannot build faster on the, on a marketplace i cannot yeah. build faster on the app Thanks it's, I, I, it's not in my in my possibilities i can do i, I can make no quick solution i find just shitty developers and say okay you can build that for me in, in five weeks okay we do pray to is it quality i don't know is it bug free i don't know is it that what you want i don't know yeah so this is not what i'm standing for like you know um so and this is like yeah the token price goes down but it's it's no point for us to make buybacks at the moment when the market goes down yeah and just to make the you now the people in the community happy or anybody and who will win the most? This is the expert with bots, with arbitrage, with all that stuff. They will cut before you make profits. They will and and it's probably the guy that won't support you for the long term anyway. No, of course not. Right? Yeah, so a it's, bot it's is useless. never someone who invested in you. He see, he see just like, you know, there's like, oh, you promise a buyback. Ah, that's perfect chance to make a quick, quick money. You know, you buy now, the buyback incoming, everybody prepare his bot, click. This is you see that the best tool is Dex tool to check how many bots are trading on your on your token or any token. Check uh, our token. There's bots not too heavy, but um, yield guild for example. We I checked the other day. There's a, a bot made 700 Ethereum I think in a month just you know by by, <laughs> by <laughs> front running and just yeah. picking up like this. And, and, and the transaction always happened in the same second. You know you make a buyback, the trend the, the buy sell we already sell. You know, like and you cannot, you know, you, you, the, the transaction is in already like like within like once this is starting, you press and the, the, the transaction is you know in the blockchain, then the other one is already making the transaction. You have no chance to do it if you have no bot, you know. And yeah, this is definitely um I, I uh, you know for me these yoga opportunities are this is actually like you know what's happened, you know, like for me as well, like, um, I wouldn't say it's always happened when Binance have a listing, yeah, but it's many times and there's a good chance in Binance you make, you make uh, money just by when you buy the token or when if, for example, um, if the token is available on, on secondary market and then it's get listed on Binance, you know, so there's a, like, uh, let's say you, you can buy. Like, uh, like Falcon Forge. Like first on the DAX and then it came to Binance like that? Yeah. So let's say you can buy it on Uniswap or PancakeSwap or any other DAX, let's say. And then the project at listed on Binance. There was yesterday a project called Galaxy Galaxy something. Went, went, uh, I, it was, I think, I didn't check if it was before on DAX, but just to give you like sometimes in, in Binance, it's like uh, the, the floor is now below 15. And it went up to 200, you know? So 
you know, it's like there, there is a moment and you just press, if, if you hold a token, you just sell and then you will, you will, you can be, you know, if you're late, you can hit, but you cannot lose because it's not going all the day. You can maybe lose, but you know, the, the point is and not as likely yeah. all the time when something is, when everybody is looking on one, on, on one thing, there is a price spike and then it goes down. And, and Yuga was so, for me, was like piling up, you know, the, the ape token went up almost to, or yeah, it was 24, $24. And then we sold all our app tokens. We said, okay, thank you. And I thank you, Yuga. And it was even like the appreciation and price was even there. We made even more return of investment we already had. And, and it, 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 a lot of people made so much money with this. And then, yeah, and then just now buy back $13. Or so what was it that? It's like, so yeah. almost lose 50% of the price. There's not because of the market. It was just because there is at the moment no more use of AppCoin. You know, because... Yeah, and the, in the experience, people are left holding the bag at the end of the day, right? The people that just don't see it, they just blindly follow the hype. Because somebody has to pay the difference that you earned. Yeah. Sucks to be them. <laughs> No, but yeah, but it's like also the, the it's same with the NFT. Yeah? You can now, you you know, you, you we had three mutants and um, yeah, Project Project Galaxy. Yeah. Um, you have the mutant and you could have sold a 10 with 10 plus Ethereum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my um, body sold for 39 and bought a different one back for 27, but now the floor today is 24. But still, I mean, amazing trade. Yeah, exactly. So, and this is, I think you will see that more often with Yuga. Anytime, and, you know, CryptoPunks, we bought a CryptoPunk uh, for, because we have also commercial rights on that. You know, that's actually the, the, the point why. And Yuga also will work on CryptoPunks, you know, 100%. Did, how, was that like a custom deal that you did or did you buy it from OpenSea? Because there's never anything listed, right? No, you cannot buy on OpenSea. You always need to buy on uh, Lava Labs. Ah, okay. Yeah, and of course you can, you know, people there's like you can find them and. How much was that? Hmm? How much was it? Uh, we paid two hundred twenty. Big boys. <laughs> Sick. Now it's. Um, I thought I had enough Ethereum, but you guys are a different level. <laughs> yeah, but this is man, man like look at this you have board apps we have commercial rights crypto punks we have commercial rights there's already utility uh, crypto punks had no utility so far because they've been limited by lava labs you know um now definitely so and, and yuga own the ip you know so they gave already a commercial rights they will work on crypto punks they already announced on the you know uh, other side that your uh, Kennel, Mutant, uh, Board Ape, and the Crypto Punks, they get a free 3D model for the, for the space. So that's the first thing. But they they, they, they already talking about, like, they're going to be most probably a Mutant Kennel, you know? So you can mutate the, the Kennels. So this is something can uh, possibly, the Mebits will get an upgrade. You know, like, there's definitely a lot of things what, what you buy now if you have enough and you just wait until you get developed you know um how much price impact this is i don't know this is pure speculation um or yeah let's let's uh, elon musk now tweet about freaking board apes and then uh, you saw that yesterday yeah yeah i did see it and then he hated on it uh, like an hour later and the price went down yeah but it's, the, the price went first of all up by 17 ethereum you know, so this is. Oh, yeah, no, I know. I followed the. I didn't follow the the floor of the apes. I followed the ape coin, which was just like one candle yeah, okay. up and then crash. Like yeah, an hour I, later. I, I I didn't check the ape coin. I was checking the the floor price because we looking. You wanted actually to find an entry around hundred Ethereum on a board ape, and it was hundred and five. <laughs> he put the, the profile picture, and it went up to one hundred twenty two or something like that. I said, man, it's like now he's also influencing the, yeah, yeah. La, la, lava labs. Uh, oh, this I don't know. No, no, I don't know if Lava Labs in the way. Sorry. I think they're in the US. I really don't know. I mean, oh, oh, oh so nice. Eh? You you spend uh, 200,000, you don't know much about the company. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, the 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 crypto punk when you said it was 220 ethereum or 220k usd uh, uh us usd not oh i thought 220 yeah, ethereum. No, 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 no. oh all right fair enough yeah sorry enough. okay and no no it's easy it's easy <laughs> <laughs> no, i don't have i don't i i i my cfo will not allow me that <laughs> <laughs> okay fair not, enough. not i mean the 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 the, the you know Maybe um, you so should send her an email every day. Board ape? No, no, no. Mark, board ape? You know, and, and then it would be like, uh, uh, like, like, you know, like a uh, crypto punk and then rest of the portfolio. And then crypto punk is even, you know, like <laughs> have more on the, on the total. No, no, no. Uh, no, that's too crazy. No, but uh, 220. And we have already there, like made maybe a 9K, of, like in India. I mean, if you want to sell it, you know. Anyway, yeah, we, but I think Yuga and, and uh, just to get back on the strategy, what we're going for with the noobs, I think it's, I think it's a good, it's a good strategy. We talked with Alan. He said, "Man, this is, it's great." I mean, there's at least there's already utility. Basically, the app, by the way, is also then you know, first of all, the app is free. The the ones we develop, um, ah, yeah, and then ah, that's what I wanted to say actually. Okay, finish that. So. I think noobs are covered. I mean, I'm happy to get feedback from your community about uh, what we're planning and we're happy to take on board the ideas. You know, it's still early. We like to get people involved, of course. Um, also do uh, some whitelist yeah, for Digits Club. And um, then, uh, yeah, so for Unix, it's not really something heavy to do with noobs, but uh, just to update anyone here, so we talk with Azure games. I mentioned it, I think, already. Yeah, last and, week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I meet him today, actually, maybe, but we had a call yesterday. I send the whole proposal out, what we offer, what we, um, what we will do, um, because they're also new in blockchain. And, you know, like, for example, the first game, what they launch is access.io. And this is um yeah it's the first azure game and they might get a priority listing but but this is like or it's not confirmed that's why i said might get but that's the deal basically they get priority listing on some of the games access is the first games that's why they want that to be listed on binance and then of course binance won't be exclusive on because they're planning to release 55 games this year until next year and then of course more coming uh, because they're the third largest game publisher in the world and Binance want basically an exclusive to cherry pick projects from these 55 games and future games to which one they want to have on their platform right on their exchange so and but the deal is okay get access on Binance and access is I, I checked the, the launch pad it's, it's freaking engine starter you know I have nothing against it but I mean like there was like there's so much space. Like if they get direct listing on Binance, that's huge, you know? And then the engine starter is just waste. I'm not, not waste, not against <laughs> engine starter. But, you know, there's like, why? And then, I mean, yeah. because, because they didn't know all that stuff, you know? So, um, and, and what we want, or what we get, basically the same deal what Binance get for the games, did the same deal we, and that's my proposal, DAO make a game file and find around that we get an exclusive on all on all the launches on all the games. Yeah, so we can choose, pick whatever we do. Is it DAO maker only? Is it final round? Is it game five? But of course, Unix gaming, not final round. So Unix gaming is the owner of that exclusive. So we still have kind of you know a, 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 a strong USP uh, towards DAO maker and game five. And yeah, so this is a huge thing and. We not only do that, we also do basically uh, in the back, we do fundraising because we have the network, we have the contacts. Um, we will split that among several tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three, because their games is not all AAA. You know, they, they, they develop a lot of mobile games and you don't need a large fundraising there. Right. And I think the interesting part with Azure is because they are not only launching all these games, so they are the one, the first game publisher really actually going into crypto, you know, like Ubisoft is a game publisher, Epic, whatever. Azure is, of course, more, more str- strong in mobile. 
Um, but um, there is, um, yeah, it's, they, they, are, they are huge and they're growing and they can, put, they can put millions of users on the game. You know, if you check, they have three uh, on all their games, 100 plus games, they have uh, 150 plus games, I believe. They have 30 million active users, you know, daily, daily active users. You know, this is massive. And if you launch one game, blockchain, and in addition, Azure have uh, developed an SDK, yeah, basically, to make all games a blockchain game, you know, with, with scholarship model, with marketplace, with token, all that stuff, you know, the token use within the game. So you, what you need to do is like, you need to uh, uh, raise money, uh, give the token liquidity, take the token, then of course, create a token, and then you add them into the SDK, plus all the NFTs, you know, the contract addresses, and then it's done, basically. So it's, it, it, um, I didn't have yet the, the run through, but I understand we had a, you know, how he, how he explained it to me, uh, the uh, SDK developer, how it works. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. I mean, so they have a, a huge selling point here at the moment because they are like first, first mover advantage. They're huge, 750 employees, you know, they have several game studios. They just acquired another Vietnamese game studio with 130 million employees. The next game, uh, so access.io, that's the game what, what's coming up. And you know, also the, the important part is on how they go to the market is their games after, re- uh, after announcement, the games are ready to play maybe two, three, four, five months later. That's, that's it. There's no two years. Roadmap. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And that's a huge thing. Not a huge, like, huge roadmap uh, that you have to wait two years exactly. fucking inside as heroes. <laughs> You know, and they, and they don't care about the fundraising. So access, even they, they're already going to the market. They are already developed. They only raise money because why not? You know, they, they already developed and their funding is still not, uh, still not closed. So basically we, we, do, we also do now the, the last funding, the, the, let's say the, what was it? The private um, was 3.5 million and two, 2 million are still open because they just started the fundraising. You know, they, 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 they haven't done anything, really. They closed the seat, of course, I think in, in April, you know? But the game after release, and they're, they're releasing maybe end of May, beginning of June, and then the game is live uh, one and a half months later. So, you know, it's, like, it's, it's really good, I mean, for the game, so. And that will be the new standard, likely, moving forward. I see that a lot yeah. more. Um, and it's good, because then games don't overplay their hand, raising... Uh, money or be upfront about you know the the timeline it becomes more transparent but i think it's like a natural occurrence that investors also see this right the vcs they see this that the market moves more towards do you need funding and we need to wait two years uh, the tokenomics will look yeah. different in that case but actually I, I gotta run i appreciate your your time i definitely look forward to the assure update um hopefully next week when yeah. you have even more details because it's one of the big things i had a call with wildlife studios from Brazil, uh, they also have, uh, well, they only do mobile only, but that's also definitely an interesting uh, party. I sent it to Simon, I don't know if he spoke about it, but anyway, uh, to conclude, the Noobs collection will be the, the major big thing. We'll keep our eyes open. We'll follow all your updates along the way. It's always a pleasure having you here. So I appreciate your time and uh, um, I hope, uh, yeah go ahead just for next friday uh that's basically the the day after arrival in miami for the permission list so um let's find someone from the team you might yeah. want to uh, have on on that sean is with me and i know no, sean simon they're still but yeah i'm i'm just with nick as a ceo cfo and myself we already on the 13th we meet the first time in real person so i i mean i'm gonna be a little bit busy on, on that day yeah. but yeah for the next friday for uh, friday after that no problem but okay. just for that friday tell me what would you like to have on your show and then we really yeah if, if simon is free that would be great but otherwise i'll just ping in the group and we can we can pick somebody that's all good but thanks for letting me know beforehand that's great yeah of course I will tell Herman and he will plan everything accordingly. Yeah, and then please, my calendar. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, he gave me a little nap. So that was good. Thank you. Herman. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, shout out to Herman. Yeah. I'll, I'll let him know that you appreciate the, the time. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Thanks everyone a, for listening. Rest for your day. Uh, it was a pleasure. And see you. Bye bye. Right. Cheers. Bye bye.